This is cycle three, week 14. We're going to be looking at Pablo Picasso. And he was an artist who was one of the forerunners of the Cubist art movement. So to begin, you want to show your students some examples of Picasso's work so that as we begin to design our own portrait in his style, the students have been able to verbalize what they see and what his style is. So I have a book here that's going to have different images of his work. You can also use a tablet or some sort of um, item like that to bring in images or print some off or get a book from the library. I'll start by showing you some of his early work so we can see the transition of what Picasso did and be able to have a discussion with the students about maybe why he ended up where he did in his artistic style. He did this portrait of his mom when he was 14 years old. Um, amazingly talented, of course, for a 14 year old and obviously very realistic. Later, he moved into what is known as his, his, his blues, excuse me, blue period. So you can see that it's much more melancholy feeling to this. Again, it's with people, but it's a little bit more abstract, it's a little bit flatter, but still somewhat realistic, very realistic, you know, in how the faces are done. And then later we have some big shifts in what he's doing and that you can see for example in this portrait so some students might not like this they might be a little bit freaked out with um, this cubist style it's very different than um, especially kids who like things very um, particular it kind of breaks a lot of the rules which is what Picasso was doing. He was trying to move into a new way of painting, um, looking at a subject from multiple viewpoints, but doing it all on a flat canvas. So really rethinking what's acceptable in art. And so one of the questions would be, you know, why would Picasso choose to draw and paint in this style? Um, did he lose his art capability? Did he no longer know how to draw? Or was this a choice on purpose? And if so, why would someone do that? So those are great discussion questions to begin with and then be able to analyze what the students see in his artwork. How does he choose to do the facial features? How is he using colors? What type of lines is he doing? Um, how is he doing the different pieces here? Very or, um, geometric in his shapes. To do our own Picasso portrait, we're going to start with some simple shapes for the head and the neck. If you have younger students, um, pre-draw this for them using black crayons so you would have the oval and then the shoulder lines. And this is going to save some time and also allow the students to have the right size to begin with. If you have older students, you can have them draw that oval shape themselves. So you would start with a pencil. And we want to have it nice and large, so I would use like a hand width here and have the students do a dot. You could do maybe three fingers from the top of the page and do a dot like that, and then three from each side. If you don't show the students exactly how big to make this oval, they tend to make it much, much, much too small. And we want to have enough space to do lots of facial features and lines and colors in our portrait. After you do the oval, you can just do some type of shoulder line here at the bottom that goes off the page on the sides like that. Now that you're done with that and you have everything the right size, you can set your pencil aside. We're going to be working with a black crayon from here on out. So I will now go ahead and take that crayon and outline the edge or the outline of the face and also of the neck and shoulder. Have the students work really dark. This crayon not only gives us the style of Picasso where he used a lot of dark outlines, but also the wax will help hold the watercolor into the right places as we paint later on in the project. Now you will guide your students through doing the facial features. But of course, these are not going to be realistic. We get to play around with them as if we're looking at a face from different perspectives. The first step is to do a curved line somewhere through the middle of the face. This is going to give us different blocks of color to do, but also kind of give us 
one side that's going to look very different from the other side. On one side of the line, I'm going to do an eye that's nice and big looking straight on, just like that. So your students will choose one side of the face and do their eye looking forward. But now on the other side, I'm gonna do an eye from a side perspective. So an example is to do a curved line then an angled line like that, as if the eye is being seen from the side. Now we can do a mouth. On one side, I'm going to do a mouth with whatever shapes I decide to do it. So I could do half the lips. And then on the other side, I'm gonna have my mouth either go in a different direction or be different types of shapes or look just as different as possible from the mouth on this side. So on this one, I'm gonna have it kind of going up like that. Now the last feature we're going to do is the nose. I will do the nose on one side of the line, but I think I'm going to do the nostrils over here on the other side of the line. So as if I'm taking the nose and doing it in two different places. Another option is to maybe like do the nose as if you're looking at it from the side. So I could do another nose over here off the side of the face or something crazy like that. Um, you can walk the students through or they can come up with their own ideas about how to imitate what Picasso might have done when he drew his portraits. If the students wish they can do ears on the side, um, they don't have to because now I'm going to do the hair. Maybe the hair is covering the ears. So I will simply think of some shape to do out here on the side. And I will do a slightly different type of shape over here, like that. We don't want the kids to fill in the hair with crayon. We don't want to make it all black. We want to be able to have blocks to put color into. So I will keep the outline like that. If I wanted to, I could maybe do some shapes inside so I can do different colors in them but we don't want to do too many shapes. I could also break up the space here in the bottom if I chose to in some of those places so that we have different places to do different colors. So this is going to be our portrait. We really think about how to do different perspectives on those faces and then some really fun kind of crazy shapes to complete that image. I'm going to use watercolor because it allows me to fill in these shapes very, very quickly. One option is to use a palette like this with the liquid watercolors in those. I like it because the students can mix their own colors and really have to engage with the color making process more. If you didn't want as much cleanup, you can always have the students use a watercolor palette like this where they just use the colors straight out of the different sections and there's not really a lot of color mixing that's going to go on with that. Like I said, I prefer this method, but um, it's totally up to the age of your class and what supplies you have on hand. So you simply go in and decide how you want your portrait to look. We're not going to be working with realistic colors. We are going to be working with really fun, vibrant, playful colors even for the skin. So for example, I would go into one of my shapes and I would color in with watercolor into that. And this black crayon really helps keep my color in that space really, really nicely. So I think I'll do her bottom lip orange, but I think I will do her top lip something totally different. I think I'm going to do a little bit of green up there. So we're really not going for realism at all. We're going for kind of like a wildness, really, something that doesn't make a lot of sense with reality. So simply go in and shape by shape, do different colors in your portrait and have the students get as far along as they can before your 30 minutes is up.